In this video, we're going to look at creating a 2D model from scratch. We might want to work with 2D files, even though it's possible to define 3D files in this frame for a variety of reasons. First of all, it helps us simplify our model. Uh, we don't have to worry about out of plane behavior. The 2D model is already applying the 2D constraints for us automatically, so it won't allow for out of plane motion. And it's always possible for us to switch back to 3D mode if we want to work in that environment. Now, when you're starting up SRAM for the first time, you'll see a screen that looks somewhat like this. You may not have any TEL files or TEL files available yet if you haven't created them. Those are SRAM's default file format. But that's OK. We're going to create one from scratch here. So at this open structure dialog, just click the new 2D button, and we're going to start a new model in 2D. This will then work us through a little dialog uh, wizard that will allow us to create files. I'm going to call this 2D example, and you can fill out your information if you like. You can choose your unit system. I'm going to stick with metric, but we can switch any one of these to whatever we want. This is our output unit, so the results and the information S frame is outputting for us. I'm going to have that in metric as well. In most situations, you won't need to adjust your model tolerance, at least at this stage. Uh, as you get more and more comfortable with the software, you might want to. So click Next. And then you can select your design codes and databases. I'm going to stick with the defaults for now and click Next. I'm going to create a new model from scratch. So I'll click Finished, and I'm brought into S-Frame with the new model. Let me just bring over my aerial window. And we're going to create a simple model from scratch using S-Frame's grid to help us with that. So here I can see that in the 2D mode, I just have an X and a Y uh, axis. I don't have the Z, which would be coming out of the screen at me. So no Z behavior is considered. And I may want to actually start off by setting up a grid to help me lay out my model. So I'm just going to click on the Edit Grids button. You may or may not have this drop down list grayed out. But if you click on the Edit Grids button, you can ungrade it out. Here I actually have a, several different default grids already created for me. If you don't have these, just click on the Open button down at the bottom right. And locate the DGD file. This is a database of grids. And you can just load this up. This is a default grid database. And I'm going to work with equal spacing one meter grid. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to display grid. I'm going to make sure that's turned on so I can actually see my grid. I'm going to lock my grids. And I'm also going to say lock joints to grids. And you'll see why I'm doing this in a little bit later. In this spreadsheet here, we can see how the grids are defined. We have the X and Y spreadsheet. And right now, I have 10 grid lines at 1 meter spacing increments in the X, in the positive and the negative directions. So I have 1 and negative 1. And I have one grid line at X equals 0. And I have the same thing in the Y axis. So I'll press OK. And now I can see my model. And I can actually zoom out to see the grid extents. So I have 10 grid lines at 1 meter increments in each direction. Now I'll start laying out my model. So I'm going to create a simple model here using the member definition tool. If I left click on this, I can use the two joints method and start drawing my members. Now the general method for using modeling tools in SRAM is to first activate the tool by clicking it, then configuring the tool using these different settings here. And then clicking in the modeling space with the cursor to create the objects. But I could also use the data bar if I want. So I'm going to actually start by creating two joints. I'll start at the origin of my coordinate system here. And left click to create a joint. And you can see now a member is following my mouse. And I'm going to go up four grid lines. So one, two, three, four to create my second joint. So I have one column here. And then I'm going to go across another five grid lines, and go up once more another four meters to create a second member. I'll connect this one, 
And at this stage, we created a very simple 2D frame. Now, you may, excuse me, you may recall that I locked my joints to my grids. So at every grid line location, whenever I draw or hover my mouse over this, a red dot is appearing. And that's saying that S-Frame knows where that point in space is, and it's allowing me to draw a joint there that can be used as the start of a memory. I can't just click out in space because S-Frame doesn't know exactly where I'm clicking. If I want to change the location of these uh, grids and the associated joints that are falling on them, I can always do that. I just need to unlock my grid. So I can do that by either left clicking on this grid lines are locked button. You notice it looks like a padlock. Or I can click on the edit grids dialog, open it up, and just untoggle this lock grids option. And now it's giving me these increments that can be specified. And I can specify the grid increments in X and Y. I'm going to use 0.1 meters. So if I do this, I got to make sure I have the lock joints to grid set up still. And now what I can do is if I want to increase this bay from say the original five meters to something different than five meters, I can left click on this line and drag it. And it's going to move that grid line to a new location. I actually have the coordinates of the location. I can do the same thing with this line here. And I can see that I can manipulate my model's dimensions this way. And if I want to lock the grid line, which is probably a good idea after we've made our changes, I can just click this padlock or go back into the dialog and lock them. And now when I left click and drag my mouse on these grid lines, it won't make those same changes. It's always a good idea to have them locked if we don't actively want to change our model's jump.